All right, this is the Canna Kit complete starter kit for the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. This kit should come with everything you need to put together the Raspberry Pi and get up and running with it. It's got some instructions, an HDMI cable, a micro SD card, heat sinks, a power switch. This is a 2.5 amp power supply for the Raspberry Pi. While the Raspberry Pi does use a micro B USB connection, I don't recommend using a standard charger like you would use with your phone. Make sure to use this 2.5 amp power supply that comes with the Raspberry Pi. This is the Raspberry Pi board itself, a case, a micro SD card reader for use with your laptop or desktop computer, and finally a nice set of instructions for assembling the Raspberry Pi. So to get started, we'll take out the case. It's a black plastic case with the Raspberry Pi logo on top. The top of the case comes off easily to reveal a two-tier interior case. So on the side of the case are slots for the micro C USB power supply, HDMI video, and the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Then on this side, we have slots for ethernet, and USB. Then on the bottom is a slot for the micro SD card. The bottom of the case also snaps off with a little bit more force. This allows you to install the Raspberry Pi in the case. The Raspberry Pi card itself has an Ethernet port, although it also has onboard wireless and Bluetooth. It also has four USB ports, the 3.5 millimeter audio jack, an HDMI port for video, a micro B USB port for power, and on the bottom is the micro SD card slot. All right, so now that we've unboxed everything, we're ready to start putting the Raspberry Pi together into its case. As you'll see, the bottom of the case has small tabs here and here. And if you look closely, there's an arrow on this corner of the case bottom. You'll want the arrow pointing away from you and on the Raspberry Pi, you'll want the HDMI port facing toward you. Now simply slip the left side of the Raspberry Pi card under those two tabs and then place it down flush with the bottom of the case. Now you'll want to take the middle part of the case and line it up over the bottom part of the case and the Raspberry Pi card. As you can see, on one side there's a slot for the HDMI port, the audio jack, and the power supply connector. And on the right side there are slots for Ethernet and USB ports. So make sure that the slots are lined up appropriately Once the slots are lined up, you'll apply a little force. We recommend applying a tiny bit of force on the side with the HDMI port so that the case begins to slide together. Then apply pressure on the opposite side so that the case snaps into place. And then once again, apply pressure on the side with the HDMI port 
and the case will snap together. Next, we'll need to install our heat sinks. This is important because even though the Raspberry Pi is very small, its processor draws enough power that it needs to dissipate heat. The larger heat sink goes on the CPU itself. Now notice that the heat sink has a, an adhesive backing which is covered with a blue piece of protective tape. So remove the blue tape, being careful not to peel off the adhesive backing. Now, simply place the heat sink over the CPU and press it on. You don't need to apply a lot of pressure, but do apply a couple of pounds of force for a few seconds to make sure that the heat sink sticks. Then, do the same with the smaller heat sink. Now the smaller heat sink is going to be placed on this black chip, which is the Ethernet and USB controller. Keep in mind that you should put the heat sink on after putting the two pieces of the case together. Otherwise, you risk not being able to put the case together if the heat sink is not centered correctly over the chip. This one can be somewhat difficult to put into place because the position of the case doesn't leave a lot of room around the chip. So drop it onto the chip, make sure it's lined up, and then again apply just a pound or two of pressure to that heat sink for a couple of seconds. Finally, you're ready to put the top on. So as you can see, the top of the case only goes on one direction. With the Ethernet ports and USB ports facing away from you, the Raspberry Pi logo will be face up. The top doesn't snap into place. Rather, it slides into place nicely. So don't apply too much pressure expecting it to snap into place. Now that you've got the Raspberry Pi in the case, you're ready to start using it. Simply Open the protective packaging and remove the micro SD card that came with the kit. This kit comes with a 32 gigabyte Samsung micro SD card. As you can see on the bottom of the case, there's a small slot to insert the micro SD card. With the pins facing up, insert the micro SD card into the slot. Now, using the provided HDMI cable, you can connect the Raspberry Pi to a monitor. You also need a mouse and keyboard. which can be connected to the USB ports. And finally, you'll need to plug the power supply in. This kit comes with an on-off switch, as well as a 2.5 amp power supply. To turn it on, simply press the on-off button on the power switch and your Raspberry Pi will boot up. If you don't have a keyboard, mouse, or monitor, you can also configure the Raspberry Pi operating system through your laptop or desktop computer. 
Remove the micro SD card from the slot. And use the provided USB adapter to plug the micro SD card into your computer. The micro SD reader is very compact. When you open it, you'll actually see that the micro SD slot is on the same side of the reader as its USB connection. This is the top of the USB connector. And on the other side, you'll see a small cutout section, which is the slot for the micro SD card. So insert the micro SD card with the pins facing down. From there, you can plug the adapter into a USB port on your laptop or desktop. Be sure not to use the adapter on the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi can only boot from its built-in micro SD card slot. And reinsert it into the micro SD card slot on the Raspberry Pi. Again, for the Raspberry Pi, you'll want the pins on the micro SD card facing up. And that's all.